welcome back to why in the morning if it's tuesday it's entrepreneurship tuesday at y254 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platforms at michelle ashira is where you can reach out to me equally across all my social media handles in this particular session it's all about matters pertaining uh, Salix Data Africa, and uh, we're looking at how they're also going, they're going to talk to us about how they get to empower the youth to, uh, in a couple of their programs. So in studio, I'm, I'm joined by Vincent Career, who is the general manager. Then we have Margaret Wangoi, who is the head of operation. Good morning, guys. Good morning. <laughs> thank you for having us. Uh, thank you guys for coming through. We appreciate and uh, we're looking forward to have this conversation Indeed. and get to know how uh, our fellow youths out there uh, can get uh, empowered yes. and what Salix Data Africa is all about. All right, so starting us off, uh, probably just like to find out uh, for the person who's watching this particular conversation, they are wondering what is Salix Data Africa? Well, Salix Data Africa, first, Salix is an acronym for S-A-L-I-X, which stands for Service, uh, Achievement, uh, Leadership, Integrity, and Expertise. Interesting. Yes. So <laughs> <laughs> we initially started off as a business process outsourcing uh, company, mm -hmm. but basically what we do is we do digitization. So we help companies transition from uh, regular paper-based uh, business processes to digitize their platforms. All right. Yes. We're going to just dive into that, more of that uh, later on. Yes. Uh, Margaret probably could tell us uh, more about uh, when the business was founded, just a little bit of brief background so that we can be at bay when you're having this conversation. Great. So Salix has been in operation for the last, on average, 20 years. It, it is headquartered in the U.S., but has offices in India, Kenya, and Ghana. Okay. Now to the Salix Data Kenya. It got, it, we founded it in 2017, so it's, it, it's been in operation of around three years now. And what we are basically centered on, like Vincent has mentioned, is digitization and now the BPO destination. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. So uh, when... Coming back to you, Vincent, Yes. Uh, when did you get to be part of uh, Salix Africa and why Salix? Well, it's interesting. I got to be part of, uh, part of Salix Data by accident. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> before that, I was in a totally different field. I was um, a trained electrical engineer. Really? Yes, and okay. then I saw an advert who, for someone uh, who was looking for someone to start off a business from scratch. And... At that time, there were two adverts, apparently. Uh, one was running for a renewable uh, energy uh, partner, and there was one that was running for digitization. So I did apply for renewable because I was in solar at that time. Well, so I get this invitation for an interview, and while sitting in the interview, I'm like, why are they asking about digitization? <laughs> Here I am for solar. <laughs> so way later is when I realized uh, my, somehow my CV got <laughs> mixed. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I so you're going into the wrong field, but you ended up yes, actually yes. I loving what you do. Yes, That's and it's interesting, interesting that story. even though it's a change of field, I've, I'm, I'm loving it. I like digitization, I'm, I'm in it full time, and I like it. So that's how I, I, I met the owners. Uh, and then, uh, so at that time, what they were looking at was purely business process outsourcing, where okay. we would be processing uh, data for US-based companies, but we process them here in Kenya. Uh, but over time, and having now understood what the digitization is all about and what it entails, I realized there is a market here. Mm -hmm. Why should we continue doing business and digitizing market um, companies for the U.S., yet there is so much that can be done here locally? So mm -hmm. at that time, then we said, let's, let's now focus on Kenyan market. And at that time, we went in uh, myself, the president, uh, his brother, and uh, one other Kenyan. So we are two Kenyans and two U.S.-based people uh, partners um, uh, as directors. Did you just mention? Uh, okay, I think I, I got it wrong. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the president of uh, Salix uh, uh, Africa, Salix Data Africa, that uh, you so got to partner with. Uh, no. So yeah, we. 
So the company has a president okay. who is John Adams, who is actually okay. the co-founder with co his brother. Oh, right now I get the, the whole picture. Yes. 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 So the president is John Adams, who okay. sits in the States, with his bro uh, okay. brother, who is the vice president, who mm -hmm. sits in the States. And so together with them, um, I have another person called David Gidhuku. Then we founded Salix Data Africa. Right. Okay. Yes. And uh, for Margaret, I'd like to find out how is it for you guys to penetrate the market? And as I said earlier on, if someone just got to hear about uh, Salix Data Africa and considering that the headquarters are back in the USA, they may probably shy off considering that the, the mentality of the perception that uh, uh, it's not our space. So how did you, how are you guys uh, breaking through into the market and how did you do it during initial stages? That is actually a very interesting question because we are operating in a Kenyan market where people feel if you can't show me who you have worked with locally, I'm not quite sure you're, yes. I can't trust what you're doing. But it's been an interesting journey because when we got l registered in Kenya, which is sometime last year, we, it was around the same time Kenya was transitioning. Like right now, you will see that the judiciary is needing to transition to, to do away with a lot of paperwork. So we, we are actually operating in a very interesting time that the, the country is actually ready to embrace what we are bringing on board. So I wouldn't quite say we are there, but then given that we are in the right time when the country is actually transitioning, I think we're in the right place. All right. Yes. Okay. So back to you, Vincent. Yes. And I would like to find out your role in uh, Salix Data Africa. And uh, how does the day look like for you when just uh, going around your business, your usual business? Um, a very interesting day for me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot of forecasting in terms of where we need to be, uh, what we need to be doing, what can we do more to better uh, meet the customer needs. Mm -hmm and what are the things that we can do to improve our service delivery. And then we also have empowerment programs where I head and help in uh, people uh, skill improvement, uh, be it project management skills, be it communication skills. And um, I think I mentioned a while back before this that uh, we work with youth uh, who some of them just transition from high school to direct to workplace. Uh, so I also uh, form part of the training team uh, where we just empower in terms of skill set, uh, we just empower in terms of uh, service delivery, what, 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 who is a customer to us and yes. things like those. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. And uh, Margaret, I'd like to find out, for someone who's watching this and just listening about um, Salix Data Africa, it's, uh, it's, it, it cuts across almost... Uh, most industries that we have and uh, one may think what do I require or what sort of uh, educational background should I have to just be part of you guys? I would say the basic form for education because we like he has mentioned we do a lot of impact so most of our jobs given that we are currently doing a lot of BPO and digitization which means we do most most of our jobs are actually data entry so you just need to have the basic typing skills and obviously a personality that you can work with people. Oh, yes. Okay. So, and uh, for you, Vincent, yes. you mentioned earlier <coughs> that you work with the youth. And uh, prior to this discussion, we were talking about uh, uh, partnership. Uh, maybe you can go into details and uh, how the youth, are, they actually get to benefit from this. I know you mentioned it, but I would like to just find out in details how young people can actually benefit from this program. Well, first we have partnered with many organizations in the slum areas where initially their main target was just to take people to schools. But then after school, then it stops there. So mm -hmm. what we've come to do is to offer opportunities where you can transition and be prepared to be ready for a work, workplace environment. So uh, like for Mission of Hope, we, we, we did build a computer lab in there and we equipped the lab and then we equipped the trainers. So. Uh, since the time we started off, we've trained over 3,000 youth. Yeah, so, and they're ready for any digitization program. I know when even the government started off the Ajira program, we mm -hmm. have some of, our uh, some of the beneficiaries who are able to easily transition to do the online job. So that, that's something that is huge for us. Okay, so it's basically uh, based on uh, online, like uh, the skills that they get. The skills they get is purely computer based computer based computer okay. based yes All right. yes okay. and it transitioned to both uh, um, 
premise-based and web-based. Okay. Yes. Oh. Oh, uh, Margaret, one of uh, the major services that you guys mentioned earlier on is on data entry, and I would like to find out um, how do you ensure how do you ensure your client security and privacy? That's a very interesting question. So before we get into an engagement with you, the client, we sign an undisclosure agreement. So you will be assured of the security of your data because you, you will understand that some data is very sensitive and you need to be very safe when you're disclosing it to other people and so do our employees. Before you work for us at the um, orientation, you will need to sign an undisclosure agreement and that binds you to not giving information whether you're working with us or whether you have left. All right. So for potential <coughs> clients out there, they should, uh, they should, be, they should be safe. Yes, yes. they are. <laughs> <laughs> and just to weigh in um, on that, <coughs> apart from uh, the name having the part of integrity, uh, we don't look at our clients as a client or a customer. Reason being, uh, we look at them as a partner. Mm. The reason is we get access to s so much data that if should we be reckless with their information, then it will be out there even for the competitors to access them. <coughs> so we look more of another department within that company uh, uh, where we process, say, financial information or health information about your clients if it's a hospital. So that means we definitely need to be, uh, have some level of integrity to be able to partner with you and handle your uh, data. Yes. I'm so sure now our potential clients uh, are at ease. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so who are the biggest spenders right now in this space? The biggest what? The spenders. Um, uh, well, if I get you right, um, the biggest potential people for this particular space yes. um, is the insurance industry. Mm -hmm. um, we have lo uh, law firms. And, and basically those people who handle a lot of paper-based information, like a general application for insurance, chances are that you will fill a form. A law firm would have tons and tons of papers mm -hmm. to support a uh, certain uh, lawsuit. Mm -hmm. So those are the people who would be the best suited uh, to, to work with us. Uh, supply chain, uh, manufacturing, there's a lot of papers uh, like uh, local purchase orders, invoices and things like those. Mm -hmm. Those are the people who are best suited. Uh, to, to for us to work with them in order to have their processes more automated. All right. Yes. Okay, let's look at, uh, going back to you, Margaret, uh, you're the, operation, the head of operation. Uh, how does it work? Do I need, as a client, do I need to create an account with you? What is the process looking like? Our process basically starts with us <coughs> visiting you so that we see how much paperwork you have. What do you want us to do? Do you want us to first deal with all the paperwork you have, then going forward, what's the plan? Do you want us to develop a platform for you so that once we have digitized all the records that you have from the past, then going forward, you do not need to have any more paperwork. So depending on what exactly you want and how you want us to go around it, because there are people who are not willing to give us their information, so they want us to work from their premises. Mm -hmm. So we work with what works for you, but ideally we'll just digitize what you have and then get your plan going forward so that we completely do away with your paperwork. Okay, and how do you guys do your work uh, through automation? Um, so just to add to what you said, okay. so we offer a free workflow right. uh, study or assessment All where right. we just we just come in and study your processes. How does how does one paper move from uh, you uh, to the next person to the person who is doing either the entry or the final product? Right. So we study that and then we come up with the best way to handle that. Sometimes we develop. Um, uh, uh, web-based forms where you don't necessarily have to have a physical paper to, to process your stuff. Mm. And, um, and given that to digitize an environment is quite costly, what mm. we do is we just start off with the basics. Like where does it hurt most? What is that process that you feel? If I were to find a way of solving this, then I would be in a better place where would, you'd be more efficient, would be, you'd be more accurate, you'd be more effective, and you'd utilize your employees more. So we start with that. We, we, we like to call that a low-hanging fruit. So let's start off with this particular process. And then we start the process of, uh, processes of um, developing it and 
and, and digitizing that. And then once that is done, then we deploy the full workflow process okay. where we there are some that will have transition into uh, digitized form and then you remain with fewer uh, that definitely must be paper-based right. yes so it all works with the uh, prioritizing what the client actually wants yes it okay. is more of where does it hurt the most mm -hmm. you know um, like in this process every CEO battles with how can we be more efficient how can we meet uh, customer needs more how can we meet employees uh, mo how can we improve employee morale? Because y if you imagine a system where you're bundled in tons and tons of papers, <laughs> I mean, you, 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 uh, even your morale just go down, goes down. So, so we come in then and then we, we help you digitize that and then you remain with just a few uh, decision-making points where you definitely need a human. Uh, to be able to make a decision. You've, you've mentioned something interesting, just being bound with tons of papers, and I remember our our f lawyers yes. out here. Yes. And they, <laughs> it's just too much, it's too much, it's bulky. Yes, yes. you can imagine even the election for 2017, where uh, when there was, um, before the repeat, then there was a challenge in the court, and if you remember the, 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 the trucks that went to, you know, to the judiciary with uh, a lot of papers just to prove the case. So it would be easy if you just have them in, in, in digitized form and then you go to your laptop to present your case. <laughs> I get you, I yes. really do. So uh, Margaret, for someone who's watching this and they still, they still don't get it, why would they choose uh, Salix Data Africa? First, because we are very customer oriented. We are we will focus on you and what you want. That's why he said we are going to offer you a free assessment so that we, most people don't even know what they want. They have an idea of what they want, but they are really not sure this is exactly what, we, what, you, what they want. So we are going to offer you a very free assessment so that we can both agree on what exactly you want, but then what exactly do you need and what's the way forward. So choose us because we are going to be there to walk this journey with you and we are going to advise you on what exactly works and what exactly you need for your organization. Okay, yes. all right. I'm sure they got it now. <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, what are some of the challenges that comes with uh, this particular business? Um, it's two uh, first. So there's the people and there's the, uh, the, the business. Um, <coughs> First, when you approach someone and you're trying to sell this product, uh, it's easy to say, but we are going to lose jobs. So someone, <laughs> someone, who'd, someone might stop that in the name of people who lose jobs, but then on the contrary, it creates jobs. Um, the other challenge is we feel that trying to digitize your processes is a bit costly, which is sometimes uh, almost true. But when you start off uh, process by process, um, then it becomes easy. And then there are other challenges to do with data security mm -hmm. where um, people are not too sure whether their information will be secure. Secured, yeah. Yes, okay. yes. So those are the biggest uh, challenges. All right. And yes. how do you assure your clients that, you know what, uh, everything is okay? You, that the fact that your data is safe and uh, just clearing the perception of that particular challenge. Uh, well, first we have internal software architects where they um, they guarantee and they do programs and deploy them into mm -hmm. our storage platforms mm -hmm. where they guarantee um, uh, security of data. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have a service where we do, sorry, um, uh, um, uh, we, we protect your data by preventing hacking and okay. we have processes where we constantly check on potential threats to oh. our storage. Yes. That's very interesting. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Margaret, <laughs> how do you, um, so far, the COVID-19, how has it affected uh, this particular business? I want to say not much, but then I'm <laughs> careful to look like we are thriving. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but we really to look for jobs there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Our biggest challenge was mm -hmm. us transitioning to work from home. Mm -hmm. And given that we are 100% transitioned to working from home, we are doing well enough, only that now our clients are affected. That means obviously our incomes have gone down. Mm -hmm. But for us, the biggest challenge was getting people who 
come from not very privileged backgrounds to get to start working from home. Every day there's power issues and then there's a client who is waiting to get their work done. But it has been pretty, not very easy, but working, that was our biggest challenge, getting people to work from home because we are a computer-based computer company. company. Yes. Mm -hmm. But COVID for us, apart from the fact that our clients are affected, I think we are doing pretty well. Okay. Uh, Vincent, do you have achievement stories? We can sample a couple of them. Um, <laughs> personal level, uh, mm -hmm. company level, yes. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> first, I think the biggest achievement which we are proud of is being able to empower the youth. Yes. You know, being able to see someone from high school develop into a leader. Mm. Apart from ourselves, the next leaders after us, are, uh, some of them are now going into tertiary institutions and universities. So that means they've never had a chance to be taught either leadership skills or you know, such. All right, and so finally oh, sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. Okay. I, I was going to mention uh, yes. in terms of business. All right. um, so whenever we start um, onboarding a customer, uh, we have a customer who came in just to give us a project. Mm -hmm. But because of our service and the skill set that Kenyans have, it, that thing has transitioned into a program. And we have, with that specific customer, we have nine lanes of business with them. So that means with the skills that Kenyans have, with the talent that we have here in Kenya, we have been able to convince that client who would have otherwise said, Africa, not for me. Okay. Yes. So finally, uh, as you just are about to wind up, so going forward, do we see where do you see the uh, the the big business opportunity uh, when in, when we talk about Salix Data Africa? It's an open question. Um, <laughs> there's so much to be done. I think COVID nineteen has taught us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. That um, there are people who not necessarily need an office but they're able to work from home. So what are those things that you can do to enable you, even if you're still working in the office, what are those things that you can do to make you more efficient? So there's a lot to be done, say, in insurance firms to automate their systems, in the legal sector, in supply chain, um, and uh, even in a station like this one of yours. So we hope to see ourselves um, help companies transition into a more digitized, uh, user-friendly, and customer-centered uh, platform. Especially right now during the COVID-19 yes, time. Yes, so yes, yes. You see, if businesses are moving online. Sorry, yes. And if you need to access your data, you need to be able to store it and retrieve it whenever you want. Okay. And if you are physically based in the office, that means unless you're in the office, you cannot access that data. So we need to be in a space where wherever you are, as long as you have internet, you're able to access, store, uh, create and uh, retrieve your data. Absolutely, yes. absolutely. Yes. Margaret, how can guys find you on social media? Our, we are on, not all, Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. Yes. It's Salix Data. All right. Yes. Simple and, as and that. And LinkedIn. Yes, Salix Data, yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay. And obviously our website. <laughs> 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 Absolutely. So yes. as we wind up, uh, our question f uh, for the day was uh, matters pertaining uh, if, if any one of you out there have been conned. Do yes. you have a con story? Will, have you ever been conned, be it in business or whatever you just going around your, your daily <laughs> activities and someone just decided to tell you something or just tried to convince you and you fell for it? At y 2 channel is where you can find us across all our social media platform. At Michelle Ashira is where you can reach out to me. Vincent, do you have, a, have you ever been conned? Um, I've been involved <laughs> with a friend who was conned and I was Oh, are you the one conned? No. <laughs> 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 no, he was conned in my presence. And at some point I was hesitant to tell him, please don't pick this item. And we ended up with a uh -huh. clay phone uh -huh. in the house after paying some money in the streets. Wow. <laughs> yes, we ended up with some clay. Margaret tells us. <laughs> <laughs> I have been coined. You have? Yes. Well, what did they, what happened? So, mm -hmm. it was just immediately after campus when you're looking for a job. Okay. And then I applied for this job, then mm -hmm. got a call, and someone asked me to send this money so that they can process stuff, and then they gave me an interview <laughs> date and told me to show up somewhere in industry or area. Then when I got there, they stopped picking up and it, oh no. it didn't occur to me that someone had just got, 
got away with like my 3,500 and I'm just Especially like, oh. in campus, that's yes. a lot. It still hurts me to date. I'm mm. trying to move on. I, ce I celebrate anniversaries for that. Don't worry, I'll give you a hug after <laughs> this. I'll give you a hug after <laughs> this. Uh, for me, I've never been conned, but th there was a time I was about to be conned. Lucky. So th there were two guys who were, they were walking behind me and one uh, dropped a wallet. And they're like, hey, here's the wallet. And they're like, Twende Mahali, Tukagawane. Oh, yes. I eh. love that story. No, I was like, no, these people, I can't trust you. Yes. <laughs> I can't really trust you. Yeah. So, thank you guys for coming through and talking about matters pertaining to Salix Data Africa and how you guys have empowered the youth and still doing it. Yes. And uh, for that, Congole Sana. Thank so, you let's so sample, much. Uh, allow me. Yes. Allow me to yeah. just sample a couple of comments from our viewers on the story pertaining con, the con men and yes. women <laughs> in our streets. So, we have HR Janet Michael saying, back during campus, a friend introduced me to Wash Wash, whereby you give money and it gets multiplied times too. Mimi na pesa tuna pendana, so I gave 6K. Nikijua, hey, nitatoka hapo na at least 12 of G's. Jizile za June is okay. What? Nailikuwa rent.